We are lucky enough today to be joined by Shannon from Goats at Work. You did. Hey, it. Shannon. Hi, you pronounced <laughs> my name right. Good job. <laughs> Thank you. I try my best. Um, and she's agreed to be uh, interviewed about the goats that are currently working on the property gradually clearing away all the uh, all the brush so thank you for joining us absolutely um, so look I've, I've got a few got a few questions actually um, so what breed are they well you've got a mixture here uh, so we've we like to use a variety because you've got the Nigerian dwarfs which are lower to the ground so they'll eat closer to the ground and then we also have some larger breeds that are Kiko boar mixes uh, and they will go up higher in your trees and get more forage because they're taller. That's cool. So we like to do variety. And then we have Bokies, which is your boar Kiko mix. Kikos and boars are meat goats. Nigerian dwarfs are dairy. But um, they all pretty much like the same forage for the most part. I'm not going to ask what they taste like. I don't know, actually. <laughs> That's a good thing. I'm, I'm good. Know. I'm right there with you. So... Um, Who's got the sassiest character? Oh, May May by far. No, Lucy. 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 You've not met Lucy. She is my huge doe that we don't bring anywhere. She jumps my fences all the time and she lets herself out of the fence. She puts herself up at night. She cruises the farm. She, she's... Socially inept. She is a trip. <laughs> we call her Sassy Lucy. It's legend that goats can pretty much eat anything. Oh, what I'm can't so they glad. eat? I'm so glad you asked that because a lot of people think that they eat tin cans, they eat this, they eat that. So goats are foragers. They are not grazers. So they don't, they eat grass, but they eat the tops of the grass. They don't eat all the way down like a cow or a sheep would do or a horse. Um, but they prefer to browse. They're called browsers. So they browse from tree to tree, brush to brush, and just eat leaves along the way. They're closely related to deer. And I think that they get that um, reputation for eating everything is because they're like a three-year-old. They put everything in their mouth to give it a try. Uh, and sometimes they like it, sometimes they don't. Um, they're really smart because if something tastes bitter or off, if there's plenty of forage, they'll leave that alone. And chances are, if it doesn't taste right to them, it's likely going to be poisonous to them. Okay. And so they do leave it alone if there's other forage available. Okay, so they're short deer. They're very short deer. <laughs> very short, sassy deer. <laughs> yeah, you're making this sound incredibly attractive for keeping on, on the farm. No, they're, they're really cute and they're doing a fantastic job, so I'm, I'm glad they're here. Um, so what environment do they prefer? You know, they have, um, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, they come from arid climates. So your dry, hot climates. But there are goats with long hair that are bred for their hair, and they're Angora goats. So my guess would be they, they would probably come from a, a cooler climate. But they typically do pretty well in all climates. They don't like rain. Um, you can tell when it's raining outside because you will not see a goat in the field. They, are all, they will put themselves up in the, in the barn very quickly. Yeah, I remember... Um last week when Amber escaped when there was that huge downpour and yeah bless her <laughs> they'll do anything they can to get out of the rain okay so why why I mean to me it's obvious but for everyone else why would you rent a goat that's a good question and, and like to to what you were saying you you use them to discover I I would say more than anything to get in there before you make that expensive ouch with your equipment pushing through into uh, unknown territory. It's, it's always good to, to send in a team of goats. They can clear the forage down and they can show you really what lies beneath. Yeah, and I've done a number of those expensive uh, ouches. We all have. Yeah. You're not alone. <laughs> so how long have you had goats? Not very long. Um, we decided back in 2016 to just get two goats because we had some areas on our property that needed clearing. And um, I had gone back to college and I did some work on my, my senior project. I had to do a marketing plan for goats and I used owning goats as a model and leasing goats as a model for my project. And from that point on, it just kind of grew into more and we decided, well, let's get into breeding. So we bred, we did some breeding and 
then we had enough to lease. So it just seemed like the, the next logical Natural step. Natural progression. Yeah, absolutely. So, so how does it work? How does the whole goat rental thing work? That's a good question. A lot of people are curious because it's, it's a lot more in depth than you would think. It's not a matter of just throwing some goats in a field and it's done. They are savvy. So they, they will find ways to get out of things. Um, they're good about getting out of fencing. So basically what we do is we will check out the property. We will carve a path through the property for electric fencing. And the electric fencing is for their protection more than anything. It does confine them to keep them focused on the area you want to graze yep. or, or clear. Otherwise they'd be all over the place. Um, it also keeps out predators. So that's, you know, we, we have to look at the property, see what forage is available and then come up with a plan. So why not just buy a goat? You could, but you can't have just one. They're herd animals. So you need to buy them, uh, you need to have at the minimum two goats because they do need companionship or they won't thrive alone unless they have someone to bond to. Now we've got a lot of pasture around here. Yes. Um, what's stopping them from eating the grass? The fence. <laughs> they love your pasture. Great. Okay, they love your note to self, don't let the goats up there, right, okay. But they will uh, only eat the top portion, so you could put them out there and they would eat the, like the top six inches, but they would leave a good portion of it. So they are really biological lawnmowers? They, no, because a lawnmower would definitely be a, a sheep or a, a horse or, you know, a cow. But they, they're not really lawnmowers as much as they are uh, brush and foragers they prefer the forage that makes sense so are they are they aggressive they can be depending on what's going on in their little world typically no they will run from you they're usually terrified of people um, unless they've been bottle fed then they're more likely to come to a person i have had the unfortunate uh, opportunity to be attacked by a goat um, only, but it was a very unusual circumstance. He was in rut, which means that he had does around him in heat and season, and he was trying to get to them. And then I was handling hay. He wanted the hay on top of him being in rut. And so he thought I was taking the hay away from him and he attacked me. So they can be, under the right circumstances, they can, they can be aggressive. Typically they're not. And the interesting thing a lot of people don't know about them is they do not have top teeth. So they have bottom teeth for pulling, but they have no top teeth. All their sharp teeth are in the back. That's where all the shredding occurs on the briars and the leaves and, and everything. And how long do they live? They can live up to 15 years. Um, the average age is about seven. So do different breeds eat different forage? That's a good question. I have found them to all pretty much eat the same thing for the most part. Um, I haven't really seen, from my own experience, one eat or prefer something over another. But I have noticed that they will eat certain forage in certain type, times of the year. So, say in the spring, they may be more they may be more willing to eat a type of shrub in the spring versus the fall. And typically, there's a reason for that. Sometimes it just means that that forage has gone from one stage to another in its cycle and become toxic to them. Makes sense. Okay, look, I mean, thank you. Thank you for providing the goats. Thank you Absolutely. for agreeing to do the, uh, do the interview. Shameless plug time. If anyone out there <laughs> wants to take advantage of your services in North Carolina, how should they reach out to you? They can, they can reach me through Facebook. There's um, a Goats at Work LLC page and I can be reached through that. That's probably the best way to reach me. We do have a website, but uh, you can access the website through the Facebook Great. page, which Excellent. is a little bit easier link. And if any of my subscribers have questions about, you know, further questions oh, about the goats, I'd be then happy. I'd they be can, happy they can put it in the comments and I'll pass it straight on to you. Absolutely. We absolutely. see each other almost every week anyway, yeah. don't we? So yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Great. Shannon, thank you very much. Thank you really for allowing me the to bring the, the goats out here and help you out with the, the clearing of the property. Uh, absolutely welcome. It's great. Thank you. Thanks.